Hello. Right, my name's Richard. I have a company called Original Outdoors, and I'm on the side of a mountain. That mountain over there, to be specific, which is called a garden. So we camped out here last night um, with the aim of being in a good place to get onto some of the gullies here and to just, well, get a look at that amazing view which is behind you that you can't see. To get some breakfast on the go, some lovely nutritional cardboard in a tin, pot, whatever, we're going to be melting snow. So this is something that Occasionally I had problems with it. It wasn't until somebody pointed this out to me that I realised what the problem was. And actually, it does make a huge difference. And that's, when you're melting snow, and I have my dry bag full of snow here, when you're melting snow, if you just stuff the pot full of snow, then there's a, and then turn the stove on and crank it up, there's a very good chance that water's going to end up tasting like it's slightly burnt. And... If you don't believe me, and if, you, if that's never happened to you, then go and try it. Shove a, stuff a pan full of snow, put it over a high heat and see what happens. You either need to melt it very gently over a low heat, which is difficult to do with modern stoves because they tend to be either on or off, really. Or do this and put a small amount of water in the bottom of the pan. Whatever you had left over from the night before. Start to heat that, and then gradually put handfuls of snow into that. It takes a little bit longer, but the water always tastes much better then. Um, the second thing is that you need a lot more snow than you think. If you pack this pan full of snow, it won't be that much water. Water as it freezes expands a lot. Um, and particularly when you've got snow which has fallen as flakes, and there are little gaps in between the, the flakes where it's fallen. So you need to have a lot more snow than you would do volume of water, or volume of water that you need at the end of the heating, melting, boiling process. So two things, if you're melting snow over a stove like this, put some water in the pan first, heat that slowly and then add small amounts of snow to it, the water will taste a lot better and gather more snow than you think. If you're camping actually on snow then you don't have to worry too much about that, but we've got snow patches scattered around here. We've had a bit of a free uh, thaw cycle over the last few days. We've only got patchy snow. So I went over to a nice clean patch over there without any footprints, without any yellow snow, and filled this dry bag with it. So it's nice and clean and it's gonna be boiled anyway. So yeah, that's it. If you disagree with this, or if you want to tell me that your stove can melt snow without any problems any single time, then put it in the comments below. If you like the videos, if you like the channel, and if you like what we do, then please like and subscribe. Um, but yeah, if not, if you don't want to do any of those things, if you just want to watch the next video, then go ahead and do that. That's fine too. My name's Richard. I'm going to melt some snow and eat some terrible porridge. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you again next time.